Welcome, John. Welcome. We start without you because we're just that sort of people. <laughs> I remember John. He yeah, you do. It's the same yellow. one. He always wears yellow. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's how he knows who he is. <laughs> who am I today? I must be John Barry. I'm wearing yellow. <laughs> I never wear yellow every time you're out. Otherwise, that's right. Exactly. I learned from you. The same way. Exactly. I learned to wear a, a temporary car. So um, I digress. Yeah, I'm talking better and better. By the end of this evening, you're going to be astonished, amazed, delighted by the incredible variety of talents and the depth of expression that is surviving 2017. So the focus is, of course, on internal creativity and celebrating uh, the art form that we're all in love with, the muse, the moon, midnight to dawn. Now, this booklet, of which there are not enough copies, is the text of what you're about to hear. Now, Janet is a new luminary, and I must ask her, and I must ask John, and I must ask Linda and Gordon. The next month will be honouring open mics, the host of them. Are you up to it? Yeah. Cool. Thank you. So, uh, that'd be really good, because you're going to be hosting at Kickback the Slam, aren't you? I'm co-hosting co on Thursday. Thursday. Exactly. Yes. With that. Poetry Festival starts on Thursday. It goes from 6 to 9. Welcome, Bob. Come on, set up. It's only me. Yeah. We've been friends for 45 years. <laughs> this stage we know our own names because it changed so often. <laughs> but he stays Bob. So I call myself Tom. Uh, to which I digress. I was here to introduce the next act, and that was five years ago. I remember I had a beard, long hair, and other flamboyant affectations, standing on the street corner talking to the air, but the air wouldn't listen. So I said, I'll go to the Baha'i Centre because there's poets poets there. They've been there almost 20 years. And a new one from Chicago, imported, but professional, Jan Kuypers has got Erasure Poems. It's the name of a band, by the way. I know, which yeah, is mind-blowing, but it's it not what it is. No, the Erasure, for those who, who don't as yet know how, how to do it, you take something like the Bill of Rights and you cross out all the parts <laughs> you don't like and problems. you make a different poem out of it. The Bill of Wrongs. <laughs> You know, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, well, you've done uh, better ones, you know, you turned, you know, the Texas into a feminist state or whatever. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's a good joke, isn't it? <laughs> but, but I'll leave it to you to take them away, Janet. This is your world. I'm poetry. Erase your poems. Okay. he's filming things, I'm going to use a microphone because that'll stop me from rolling around and moving all over the place. Okay. Just, we like rolling. Well, you know, if that's going to be, I'm going to be off a screen, which is an issue, I guess. Hi. 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 My name is Janet, Janet Kuypers, for those of you who haven't met me before. You know, I might just hold it, it might be easier now that I moved it over here. No, she's like, I'm going to roll it back, you are the best. <laughs> it's a, <laughs> so yes, for National Poetry Month for this, I decided to do poems where I'm erasing lines from other well-known texts or historical documents or speeches, and I picked the strangest things to actually pull from. I really like tested myself to try to rearrange how all of these work, and I hope that you appreciate them. This first one is an erasure poem on the meaning of art. And these are selected words from excerpts of a key Adolf Hitler speech on arts in Nuremberg, September 6, 1938. The endowment of a true artist is that his work of art express the general will of a period. Works of art rightly mirror the inner mind of age, of life, at present, expression of the world with race will turn to ages and ages which has always possessed the freedom of the spirit, of the will, and of the mind. This, naturally, shall manifest in art, and it shall be influenced in a thousand ways through the evidences and memories of that which still, as an ideal force, lives on and works on 
in the imagination. The more the modern approaches this, more and more will civilization be influenced. Art is, in its purpose, no mystic cult, only the care of people. We, we have no religious retreats, but arenas, and our assembly is not of the mystical gloom of a cathedral, but of brightness and light. Mystically minded, steel. Art, works of culture, positive facts speak louder than any. We can speak of art, a new awakening of our cultural life, which finds its confirmation not in found in mutual compliments and literary phrases, <laughs> but of positive evidences of cultural creative force. Architecture, sculpture, painting, drama, and the rest bring proof of a creative period in art, which in forgiveness and in virtuosity has rarely been matched in the course of human history. Try to turn these facts upside down. We know the cultural achievements will win the respect and appreciation far more than the material. Have no doubt that creative work, since it is the most sensitive expression of a talent, cannot be understood or far less appreciated by individuals which are not the same. So make art. It is a proclamation of body and spirit. It does not make propaganda for an individual work, for the subject, or for the artist. It makes propaganda for the world, which confronts us. And so art will announce and herald that common mental attitude, that common view of life, because these can meet with understanding of only if it reveals in itself the true essence of the spirit. The mystic narrowness and gloom of the cathedrals began to recede and to match the free life of the spirit. Buildings became spacious and flooded with lights. The mystical twilight gave way before increasing brightness. Because freedom of the soul and of the will for centuries opened the way to new forms of expression and creative, artistic, creation. Thank you. And he couldn't pay people, and that's why he was rejected in Vienna. So it's appropriate that he loved talking about art so much, I guess. Um, this next erasure poem is A Cornerstone Against Slavery. This one was a challenge because these are selected words from the Cornerstone speech, an oration by Confederate Vice President Alexander Stevens in Savannah, Georgia on March 21st, 1861. This one was a challenge because I worked on trying to make this poem be something where they actually oppose slavery. We'll see if it works. This would split. Conjecture with the great truth may be doubted. Prevailing formation of the old were the violation of the laws of nature, socially, morally, politically. It was an evil. Those ideas were fundamentally wrong, rested upon this assumption of equality. This was an error and a sandy foundation. It fell when the storm came. Our laid cornerstone, the great truth, is not equal to the natural and the normal. This great physical, philosophical, and moral truth, it has been so amongst us. The error of the past still clings with a zeal above knowledge from the mind of insanity. Conclusions are right if premises were. The, the equal, warring against principle, founded in nature, should ultimately succeed and would ultimately fail. That impossible war against a principle was warring against principle. Equal made unequal. Secure power, show your ability, maintain your rights. Never allow slavery to the soil. Clamor against getting or, or letting go. 
and then fight this strange paradox. And there seems to be but one rational solution, notwithstanding humanity. <laughs> Give up the benefits, labor to the necessity, the necessary, they come from nature. This is seen in question, the desire, peace, simply a recognition of our independence. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I have to make something about women's issues. I have to do this one for you because if I pick things that are questionable topics, I might as well pick the uh, a, a well-known U.S. document. Uh, this next major poem is a Declaration of Female Freedom because these are selected women's rights words pulled from the United States Declaration of Independence. It becomes necessary to dissolve this, to assume power, separate from man, I impel the separation. Hold these truths to be self-evident. Men create no rights on life and happiness. Men derive power from the weak. <laughs> and I am not more disposed to suffer. Evils are themselves a long train of abuses and it is right for me to provide new future security. It is not necessity to avoid injuries and the absolute tyranny over me. He has utterly neglected me, refused me, thought I was only a body for the sole purpose of compliance with his measures. He has dissolved my rights. He has refused for a long time any power I have. He has prevented obstructed justice on his will alone to harass with military power. His acts on all parts, on us, without our consent, depriving us benefits for offenses on the free. Bound at once an example for introducing the same absolute rule for once. What is right for us and with this firm reliance, we pledge our lives and our sacred honor. Thank you. Um, I, I that. This is the most recent thing that I wrote, and it's a shorter one. This is a little crazier. Uh, this one is an original poem titled, One of the Most Hated Women in America. <laughs> These are chosen words spoken by Casey Anthony after she was charged with the murder of her infant daughter, Kaylee, for which she was later acquitted. She keeps a lonely, guarded life now. In her words, I was in confinement for 23 hours a day, for weeks at a time. In her words, my sentence was doled out long before there was a verdict. Sentence first, verdict afterward. Guilty long before a day in court. In her words, she does not have a significant problem with not telling the truth. In her words, I hate to say this, but cops believe other cops. Cops tend to victimize the victims. I see why I was treated the way I was, even though I had, even if I had been completely truthful. <laughs> cops lie to people every day. I'm just one of the unfortunate idiots who admitted they lied. In her words, I don't give a about what anyone thinks about me. I never will. I'm okay with myself. I sleep pretty good at night. Ooh. Thanks. <laughs> 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 no music. 
And this last one I can actually talk about for a while because I was picking up odd, strange documents and the like. And if people have the chapbook and you see at the last pages, there are photos. I visited India in 2015, and as I was walking in Andhra Pradesh along the Bay of Bengal, I was seeing a bunch of statues of leaders and prominent people, and two-thirds of the plaques below them would say in Hindi as well as in English things like freedom fighter, poet, or, you know, revel you know, and like two-thirds of them had comments about being great classical poets and the like, so I, I even had to take a photo of one of them, Sri Sri, which is in this chapbook, um, because it said under his name that revolutionary poetry was his forte. And I just thought that was so cool sounding. Um, and he looked like he was in more modern gear holding a clipboard. He died in 1983. And uh, I found a translation of one of his poems. And these, this is my last piece, and thank you very much for this. These are selected English words from Sri Sri's Telugu poem, which is translated into histories of the nations. History proud of exploitation of others. History an exercise in mental mutual destruction. History drenched in the blood of war. History made slaves of the meek, murderers climbed to glory. Entire passes wet with blood, if not tears. Decimated populations echo history. Connivance, jealousies, conflicts prove the course of history. Grand murderers and thugs built a bridge of swords to time. Artificial laws with other forces fell down as houses of cards. The deception, the heinous crimes of the mighty, the schemes can't be allowed. Exploitation of one person by another, one race by a different race, can't go on. All the downtrodden peoples, the different races of all continents will broadcast in one voice the true nature of history. Which battles took place? Which kingdom lasted how long? And the dates, the documents, these are not the essence. Stories hidden under the dark corners of history are wanted. Truth won't hide by being hidden. In the twilights of history, what was the development of the human? What achieved grand truth? Which sculpture, what literature, which science, what music, which renunciation, which dream? Yeah, it's all true. It's all true.